This is part one of my Go High Level beginner automation series. And this part one, we're going to go through the layout and how everything works, essential automation knowledge that you need, and fixing any troubleshoot issues. Like if automations don't work, what do you do to fix them? There are over 40 different triggers and actions in Go High Level. Missing just one of these settings can be the reason your automations silently fail. But most people never actually learn the automation logic they just follow broken templates and wonder why the automations don't work or why they're not good at it. This series that I'm making, I'm hoping is the best on YouTube to get you from zero to the end, knowing everything, even if you're starting from zero. So let's get into it. Okay, we are in the automation section now. I'm gonna go through this as if this is your first time and you just want a good understanding. So here we are, automation section right there. Now, what are we looking at? So. First, we'll start on the left. So all workflows, needs review, deleted, and new smart list. So needs review, nothing really come up here. You don't really need to look at this. And any workflows you've deleted will come through here. This is just where if there's automations with your, if there's any errors with your automations past 30 days, they'll be here. But that rarely, rarely happens. And campaigns and triggers, you do not need to worry about at all because that's an old thing. Campaigns are no longer maintained. Same thing with triggers, okay? So they're not maintained anymore. You just need to focus on the workflows, okay? So now we've got all workflows. So now we just got, so now smart list. So what you can do is click add smart list. Now you can add filters to your automation. So as you can see, I've got so many automations in the middle over here. So I can make a little list to keep them nice and separate. You can also make a folder. So what I can do is go to advanced here. Let's say I want a folder uh, or um, a list of just all my published workflows. So I'll go to status, is published, go to apply. I can name this published workflows, press save. Okay, so here we are. So now it's creating create a new list on this horizontal plane here. And these are all my published um, automations. So of course you can go here and you can filter it by whatever you want really. So create it on the tags, action type, status, workflow name, even the name itself. So if the name contains or contains the name, I don't know, automation, you can just do whatever you want. You can even double down and then even add two filters. So you know what I mean? So you can add trigger type is whatever and then make a filter in a filter to make it super specific. Okay, so that's done. Now we've got create folder. So you go up here, you can create a folder, and then it will come like these, these are folders. Then any automations you have, you can come here and you can just move to folder and it will go into those folders, common sense. Okay, so now we're getting into the juice of things, okay? So create workflow. So you've got two options, okay. So you've got start from scratch, which you are gonna use a lot of the time, but there are scenarios where you can select a go high level template. But if you're starting now, it's good to learn it yourself. So if they've, they've kind of done this for you a lot of it. So any of these that suit what you're making, you can click it and go through it. But for now, these are done for you and we want to actually understand it because if you just go into pre-built workflows and don't understand it, how to build from scratch, these are useless. Like it's completely useless because you won't know how to trigger it. You won't know how it works. First start with, um, from scratch, then go into these, okay? Okay, so let's go from scratch. Let me explain to you everything. Okay, so let's go into our essential workflow information that you need for part one of this series, okay? Okay, first we can go back, we can zoom in, we can zoom out. Let's keep it like that, that's fine. Okay, so here we always wanna name the workflow. So let's say we're gonna do an automation. So a really bog standard automation that you're probably gonna use hundreds of times. So I'm gonna do it in this video is in calendar automation, calendar follow-up. Let's just name this for video, okay? Like, just like so, okay? So now we've enabled it, always wanna save it and your workflow, your automation will never work. Even if you've done everything right, if it's in draft mode, has to be unpublished and you have to save it, okay? That's how it works. So every automation and in this series, One's gonna be the more basic, two, three is gonna increase in level, okay? So the trigger is what starts this automation. So if someone fills out my calendar, I wanna get a notification. I want them to get a confirmation email and then 30 minutes before our scheduled meeting, I wanna get notified again so it reminds me 
and I want my customer or potential affiliate to get reminded that I calls in 30 minutes, okay? So that's an automation that companies want, you want. So I'm gonna do that in this video because everyone needs this, okay? By the way, uh, if you want 30 days free trial with high level, use the first link in the description and you get all these benefits here. So super useful, get all those benefits. Okay, so our trigger, so when you click here, this is how we start it. So you've got so many things that can trigger off this, okay? So we're gonna get in more detail as we go along. But as you can tell, there's so, so many things, but the best thing to do is search. So first one is when a customer books appointment, isn't it? So customer booked appointment. So if you press save, this is wrong to do that because the reason is because whenever any customer books on any calendar, this will fire off. So we need to filter it down. Let's go to add filters. Let's say in calendar, calendar is my affiliate calendar, high level Harris Q&A calendar, okay? Let's press save. So now only when someone books onto my Q&A calendar, this will fire off, okay? So now I want to tag them. The reason I want to tag them is in our CRM section, when because whenever someone fills out their information, High Level automatically stores that information in the contact section of High Level. So it's nice to have a little tag next to their name, um, knowing where they came from. They came from a Q&A calendar. So let's tag, let's press add contact tag. And here we can type in affiliate calendar and press add new tag like so. So we always can just see what's going on. Okay, so they've booked in, we've tagged them now. What we want to do is remind ourselves. So we want to send an internal notification to us um, or the business owner themselves. So you can write an email to yourself. You can send a notification, which I prefer, or an SMS to yourself. So I prefer notification and I'll show you this automation working. So the reason I like the notification is because on the Lead Connector mobile app, okay, which is the Go High Level app. So not so it basically synchronizes everything in this this computer version into the app and I get pinged on my phone just like how you'll get a, a WhatsApp ping or a YouTube ping or an Instagram ping it pings on my phone ping that lead connector and whatever message I want come here so if I say here blah 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 if I want this to trigger off that would trigger my phone with a title blah 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 then the message below okay so it's basically I'm, I'm making my own custom notification for myself through the app that will ping on my phone, okay? So I want it. So whatever someone comes here, books, um, puts their name and everything on the calendar. So what I want to do is come here. Now, these are custom values. So this is going to pre-populate, okay, with whatever information the customer or you guys, when you book on my affiliate calendar, if you want to speak to me, uh, put in the comments and I'll give you the calendar link. Um, whatever you guys are put in when you book, uh, this will take that information, extract it, and put it here. So user is us, contact is user is me, contact is like the customers. So contact first name. So let's say let's say someone called Harry uh, books. So it'd be Harry has has booked a, a meeting with you. So that can be the title. Now I want to tell myself what time. So at appointment start date and time so this will extract whatever time and date he selected uh, and pre-populate so a friday 17th at 4 p.m okay that's how it's going to work now i want it to redirect me to contact if i ever click on the notification it redirects me to harry to user type i wanted to go to me the notification to me so let's select me and that's that perfect okay internal notification to me so what we've done so far, trigger is someone books, add the tag, internal notification. Now, this notification is to me. Now we need to send a notification to the person that's booked. So let's send them an email. Cool. From, let's do Harlow Harris email, could be my email. We can add a subject saying contact. So the subject of the email will be, hey, uh, confirmation, hi, confirmation meeting with high level harris that's me then i'll go on chat gpt and let's let me quickly craft up a email okay chat gpt has done it here so let's just do that copy that in paste that in hi here we can change it to their name so contact 
first name thank you for giving me this email confirmation upcoming meeting perfect date let's put the date here we just put the date and time in here so date and the appointments start date and time so we can put that there location i can put the zoom link in here so let's go here to meeting location that i've already preset and duration can put here 30 minutes if you have any questions blah 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 best regards harris that's fine let's keep it like that perfect remember to remember to name it to customer boom now we want to wait before the meeting so let's go here and type in a wait okay now we need to do a different one not time there we need to wait until so we need to wait until before or after event start time that's what we want so before let's say before 30 minutes before our meeting let's remind them so wait remember let's name it 30 means before uh meeting save so now we're waiting 30 minutes before the meeting so i'm hopefully uh, me doing this is making you understand how automation works so it's kind of just going one two three four okay I'm going to show you how to copy, delete, all that kind of things. Just stay with me right now. Okay, so this automation is almost done. So now all we need to do is I can show you something. So we want to kind of copy these two things. We want to notify myself again and send them an email again. So what we can do is just come here, copy, copy action, move it there. And the email again, come here, copy, copy action, move it here. But let's change what's inside it this time. So contact name meeting in 30 minutes that's all i need to say now i just want to tell chat gpt now make a reminder for our meeting is in 30 minutes here's our subject go there then the message um just there okay let's just change this around so their name of course you guys should know this now so first name Meeting, confirmation, discussion, 30 minutes. Perfect, perfect. Best regards, Harris. Perfect. Time, we can change that to start date and time. That'd be perfectly fine. Meeting location, we can just even copy and paste our Zoom link if we want. So we can even just come here to meeting location and save. Okay, done. So now let's publish and save this. Now I'll show you how it works. So let's book onto that that um let's book onto it and I'll show you how it works live. Okay, so here's my calendar. Let's book on. So do that. We could put my own email in. Okay, confirm and I'll show you the automation. So here we are. It's Michael Jackson in my profile. Okay, you can see. There you go. Okay, so you see that notification popped up. So let's go on to my email and check how it looks. Okay, so here's the email that we drafted out, remember? So thank you. Here's our meeting title. The date is already all put out the way I booked it. So 7.30 July 17th. Here's the location, duration. Perfect. So I'll show you how it looks like in the enrollment history. So we're moving on to our third section now, which is fixing any troubleshooting. If you've got any problems with your automations, these are the two things you wanna do. But first, look at this. So we've got two people on this step right now because they went to these two. Now it's waiting 30 minutes before our meeting, then it's gonna push them through the next two. Perfect. So here's the enrollment history. Here you go. So I did it twice. So you can see this person right now is on the waiting step as i just shown you you can see view execution history you can see contact execution path you can literally force contact into a step if you want them to so we can force contact into the next step so because i forced him through he got he got pushed through onto the next step so reminder our meetings in 30 minutes remember that email sequence we made so it is we pushed him through to this section because pushed him from there onwards this came to me this went to him so this that was that email and so this one's finished so we can see the view execution history over here and execution logs so if you've got any errors anything like that because i pushed this one forward that's why um email to customer error obviously 
Okay, so we just tell every single step what happened. You can view details and here, if it's a failure, it will tell you why it's a failure. That's the crucial part. Error, unable to send email, contact emails invalid because I just put something random, okay? Um, so yeah, so that actually wasn't the one I pushed through. That's actually the one, uh, his e the email that I put a random email in, okay? And if you ever want to delete a step, you go to three dots, go here, delete all actions from here, which delete that one and everything below it or just delete action like that. And if you don't want to publish or want to test it, just go to test workflow. Be sure you have contacts in the contact section of high level, select them, run the test, perfect. By the way, if you go to my YouTube channel, go to playlists. I've got 11 playlists going step by step. So I do have an automations playlist right here, number six. Okay, so if you're starting out, start with number one, then go to number two, then number three. So websites, CRM, calendars, got the AI tutorial, got the even the Lead Connect, the mobile app tutorial. Everything's there for you. I don't have a free course. I'm not going to rob your email, do all these shenanigans. Everything's there for you. This is more content here than a free course or even a paid course. Okay, so make use of it. Um, I've done that for you. So, and if you want one-on-one -on -one support with me, my snapshots, my sales script, my white level presentations, use first thing in the description. If you already got an account, you still want to transfer over, email me, drop a comment. I'll send you a booking link. We can do, go on and jump on. We can jump on a Zoom call, get that all sorted. No problem. I hope this was useful. If it was useful, please let me know because if no one finds it useful, I'm not going to make part two, which is more advanced than part three, which is even more advanced. Um, so like the video, if I got enough likes or more uh, comments saying, please do more or do more, do more, whatever. Uh, if not, I won't. And I'll save myself the headache. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Please like the video. This is a part one basics. And yeah, let me know if you want more.